Our scripture reading this morning comes from Mark chapter 8, verses 31 to 38. And he began to teach them that the Son of Man must suffer many things, and be rejected by the elders and the chief priests and the scribes, and be killed, and after three days rise again. And he was stating the matter plainly, and Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. But turning around and seeing his disciples, he rebuked Peter and said, Get behind me, Satan, for you are not setting your mind on God's interest, but man's. And he summoned the crowd with his disciples and said to them, If anyone wishes to come after me, he must deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever wishes to save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake and the gospels will save it. For what does a man profit to gain the whole world and forfeit his soul? For what will a man give in exchange for his soul? For whoever is ashamed of me and my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, the Son of Man will also be ashamed of him when he comes in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. This is the word of God for the people of God. As we read in our scripture today, we find Jesus speaking to his disciples about how the path to follow him is going to be difficult. He tells them that they must expect that though they believe in him and his message, that Jesus will be rejected by those who they may hold in high esteem. And he tells them at the end of his ministry, he is going to die. And when Peter hears this, he is shocked and dismayed. And he takes Jesus aside and says, you can't talk like this. You can't tell us things like this. It's going to hurt our faith, and it's going to hurt our faith in you. So what was Peter thinking? Did he forget who he was talking to? But Jesus responds to him in front of the other disciples, get behind me, Satan. And as I've said before, I see so much of us in Peter, and so much of Peter in us as people. See, we as the people of Christ, we try so hard to do what we think is right. And we try to do what we think is pleasing to God. But sometimes we're wrong. Sometimes we confuse what is pleasing for us for what is pleasing for God. And we put our own stumbling blocks up in front of us, even when we have the best of intentions. Now, I can't imagine it felt very good to Peter to hear Jesus say to him, get behind me, Satan. Now, the problem wasn't that Peter was trying to get Jesus to stop speaking about his death. He wasn't just saying, don't do this, Lord, because of this. See, the problem was Peter was focused on the things and the thoughts of man and not the thoughts of God. He couldn't get past the thought of being worried about the life of his teacher, being worried about the life of his friend. He couldn't think about the plan and the salvation that Jesus already knew was going to happen. So as we move forward in the scripture, Jesus calls the crowd before him and the disciples as well, and he begins to preach to them, letting them know that if they are going to follow him, they're going to have to leave their lives behind. If they're going to gain salvation, they will have to lose the things in their lives that are holding them back from truly following him. And Jesus tells them that the reward for losing their lives for him and the gospel is that they will be granted their lives eternal. Jesus also makes the point during this point during scripture, what good is it that you gain the whole world and lose your soul? And he closes the passage of scripture by letting the people know that if they're ashamed of him in this life, he's going to be ashamed of them when they stand before him and his father. Now, this passage of scripture is just full, full of things to talk about. And it's often considered and thought about from the standpoint of a warning against the thing in this world and how they can stop us from living your life in a way that is in agreement with the gospel of Jesus Christ. It is also, I think, the way that we can measure how we should be living our lives. You see, at the end of this world, 
the lives that we have led are going to be measured. And if we live our lives in a way that is unashamed of Jesus, then when we stand before him, he will be unashamed of us. So how do you usually measure your life? Is it by how long you live? Is it by the house that you live in or the car that you drive? Is it by how tall you are or the weight on the scale? How do you measure what you are doing in this life? Is it by the success that you find in your work? Is it by all the things that this world tells you to value? Now, when I was coming out of college, I would have measured my life by being able to find a job in the field of study that I went to school for. I had intended at that time to try and be a history teacher. Now, I was a pretty de decent student in college, and I had also made sure that I was doing things like volunteering in a local school district, and I had done all the things that my professors and my mentors had told me to do in order to make sure that I had the best chance possible of getting a job. I was able to actually student teach in that same school district, and I thought that I had a pretty good in there. And I did get an interview for a position that opened up that summer. And when they called me to schedule the interview, I happened to be on vacation at the time. And so I drove back the five hours from vacation just to attend that interview. And I thought, wow, that will really impress them. They'll see how much I really, really want this job that I'm willing to drive back like that. I sat through the interview and it seemed to go really well. There was even a fellow coach of the team that I had volunteered for that was part of the interview panel. And I thought, I am gonna get this job for sure. Well, I didn't. You see, I didn't quite measure up to what they wanted or I didn't quite measure up to one of the other applicants. So I went to work at another job and I spent a few years in one department there and it was going pretty well. And my boss set me down for my yearly evaluation and she told me that I had been doing a great job. And she asked me what my long-term plans were inside that department. And I told her that I wanted to continue working there. And over time, hopefully I could work my way up and then one day I'd hope that I could lead the department. Of course, after she retired, I told her. And she laughed and she said, Eric, you're a good worker, but I'm gonna tell you right now, you're never gonna go any higher than where you are right now in this job. See, again, I was measured and I was found wanting. And you know, both of these things were really hard for me to deal with. You know, the world tells you that you work at your job or you, you go to school and you study hard and that is your goal and then that's how you're measured in your life. And I wonder what I was doing wrong. Why wasn't I good enough? See, I had done the things that I was told that I needed to do to succeed, but I was still failing. Well, as I look back on it now, I realized that I was failing because I was measuring myself and allowing myself to be measured by a standard that I shouldn't have in the first place. You see, I wasn't supposed to be in that job at all. Those jobs were not what God had in mind for me. His calling on my life was that I was supposed to be here. Well, maybe not right here, but serving a church, though I'm very happy to be serving this parish. You see, I had a calling when I was younger and I didn't pursue it. God had called me to ministry at a younger age, but I pushed it away. Now, when Peter tried to tell Jesus to stop talking about his death, Jesus told him to get behind me, Satan. You see, that time Peter was being an obstacle to what Jesus knew God required of him and wanted from him in his life. For me, I let fear play the role of Peter in my life. I was afraid. I was afraid I wasn't a good enough person or a good enough Christian to answer God's call. 
I was afraid that going into ministry was going to put a limit on my life, and I was afraid that I would lose control over what my life was going to be. Oh, how I wish that I would have had the same reaction that Jesus did. And how I wish I'd have looked at that fear and said, hey, fear, take a hike. You're not going to stop me from doing what I know God wants me to be doing. Now, obviously, I did finally find the courage to say, get behind me, Satan, to my fears. And I'm living into my calling now, or at least I'm trying to. And now I know that I am being measured by the standard that I should be. I'm being measured by the words of Jesus. I'm taking up my cross and I'm following him. Now you might be thinking as you're listening today, hey, good for you, pastor. Or you might be thinking, you're not measuring up still. And you might be thinking, oh, great, another self-righteous pastor. I can't wait to sit through the rest of this sermon today. And this is true. I have a long way to go. I have a lot to improve upon. And I will most definitely stumble on this path as well. But I take solace in the fact that though I'm, that I am measured by Jesus, I am to be judged by Jesus, and I'm going to give my life and live it unashamed so that Jesus will not be ashamed of me. Again, you might be thinking, hey, great for you. You were called to be a pastor, but I wasn't. So what does this mean to me? Well, here's the thing. God has a call on all of our lives, not just the pastors. And there are things in your life that he wants you to do and he wants to use for his glory. And he wants you to be measured by that same standard. He wants you to deny yourself and take up your cross and follow him. So what is it that's stopping you? What is the thing in your life that you need to look at and say, get behind me, Satan, so that you can move forward in your walk with Christ? For me, it had been fear. Is it the same thing for you? Fear of losing yourself or the ones that you love. Is that what is holding you back? Well, Jesus tells us that if we're going to follow him, we have to deny ourselves. So my challenges for you this week are these. What is it in your life that's stopping you from following Jesus the way that he wants you to? Are you going to take a stand this day and say, get behind me? And what is it that you need to do with your life so that you know that you can stand before Jesus one day and have him say, this one was mine. They loved me, and I love them. Amen.